Amen. Amen. God bless you, people of God. God bless you tonight or this evening. Amen. Today is, I believe it's, I believe it's, I believe it's uh, what the day? I don't even know what the day is, man. I really haven't been keeping up. Amen. Let me see what the day is. Amen. Today is actually. God bless you. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We need to rejoice. Amen. And be glad in it. Anyhow. Amen. Today is Wednesday. Amen. The 25th. Amen. Of March. Today is Wednesday. Amen. And uh, God is still on the throne. Amen. He's still on the throne. He's, listen, he's still in control. Amen. God is still in control. Amen. He's still in control. Amen. Regardless of what may be going on in your life or in my life or around us. Amen. God is still on the throne. Amen. God is still in control. Amen. If he wasn't in control, listen. If he wasn't in control, amen, we will be, amen, things will be worse off than what it is now if God was not in control. <laughs> so thank God, amen, that God is still on the throne and that he's still in control, amen. We, we think it's bad, amen. We think it's bad, but amen, God is still on the throne, amen, and God is still good, amen. Regardless of what may be going on in this hour, the Lord is still good. He's still orchestrating the things, amen, of this world. He's still orchestrating the things that's going on in your life, amen, so that he can get the glory out of it, amen. I just thank God for being who he is in this hour, amen. The Lord is good all the time. He is good. My, one of my favorite scriptures, amen, is Romans 8, 28. It says, all things, all things work to, good, work to the good, amen, to them that are called and those that love God and those that are called according to his purpose, amen. All things work together for the good to them that love God and those that are called, amen, according to his will and his design and his purpose. Amen. So regardless of what I'm going through in this hour or what you're going through in this hour, some kind of way, even what you're going through right now, God is going to make that thing work out for your good. Amen. We just, we have to trust God. We got to trust the Father. Amen. Trust the Father. You have to put your life, I have to put my life in his hands. Amen. Regardless of if it, listen, regardless of everything is going well, if everything is going well, I still have to put my life in his hands. Amen. Even when things are going well, things can go wrong. I'm telling you. Amen. You got to listen. You, you got to put your trust, amen, in the Lord, regardless of what's going on in your life or regardless of what's going on in my life or what's going on around me. We have to put our life in God's hands. Amen. And and in doing that, amen, there, there, there is peace. Amen. There is joy. Amen. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. I know that sometimes things can, can, can shake us. Amen. It can, there are things that come, storms that come that can shake us a little bit, amen, until we can focus back on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and we'll find out that we have peace, amen. We can have peace in the midst of the storm. We can have joy in the midst of the storm. We can still say hallelujah. We can still say hallelujah. Hey, we can still say hallelujah in the midst of what's going on in this hour. We can, listen, we can still stomp our feet, amen. We can still clap our hands, amen. 
God is good. I'm telling you. God is good. I'm telling you. He's good. He's good. Listen, I ain't work. Man, it, it seems like I've been off for three or four months. It seems like I've been off for three or four months. I've been working sporadically here and there. Amen. But God is still good in spite, amen, of everything that's going on in this hour. Because I trust God. I believe God. I believe that some kind of way that everything that I'm going through in this hour, that God is going to make that thing work out for my good. Some kind of way. Amen. It's all going to work out for my good. Amen. Listen, you, you can come out with stronger. Amen. God is building character. Amen. Listen, he's doing a lot of things at the same time in my life and in your life. We just got to trust God. I think I, I think we, we're going to uh, think the Lord uh, want to uh, uh, we're going to title this uh, lesson on this evening. Trust. Amen. Trust. <laughs> Trust in the Lord and lean not on thy own understanding. <laughs> Amen. God is good. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm happy. I'm a, Listen, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I feel the joy of the Lord down in my soul. Amen. I feel the joy of the Lord in my soul. I'm happy. I'm not worried about nothing. You know what I mean? I'm at, I'm at peace. I got peace on the inside of me. And I'm, I'm at peace with God. His wrath does not abide on me. Amen. Because I have accepted his son. Amen. My big brother, as my deliverer, as my savior, as my commander in chief, huh? as my chief shepherd, God is good. We don't have, listen, we don't have anything to be worried about if we, if we can just focus, focus our attention more on God. Amen. And, and and not focus more on what's going on in our society today. Amen. If you know the scriptures, amen. We we already know as believers. We know as believers, amen, that these things are supposed to take place in this hour. Fret not. Fret not. Put your life, amen, in God's hands. Put your life in his hands. Well, let's get into some of these scriptures, God. <laughs> if, if I keep on going, we'll never get to the scriptures. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna come out of um let's go. We're gonna be reading from Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three, man. God is good. I'm telling you. God is good, man. He's good. He's good. I don't have no fear. Amen. No fear when I go outside or when I go into the stores. I don't have no fear. Amen. Even though fear is all around me. <laughs> Even though fear is all around me. I don't I don't fear. I don't fear. Ah! I don't fear. I I don't have no fear. I don't. And it it's and it's it's all due to the glory of the Father and and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This gift that gives us the boldness. Amen. To walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. I'm telling you, God is good, man. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. I'm reminded of the three Hebrew boys that was in the fiery furnace. Uh, Meshach, who was that? Meshach, Abednego. I can't think of the other one now. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can think of Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, how they was thrown in the fire. Huh? How they was thrown in the fire. Amen. And I believe it was the king that said, uh, turn it up seven, turn the heat up seven times more. Turn it up seven times more. And he threw the three, three Hebrew boys in. Amen. Man, I tell you, God is good. They told the king. They told the king. Even if he don't deliver us, O king. Huh? Even if he don't deliver us, O king, we're not going to bow down and worship you. Huh? You got to see, so you got to be able to trust the father, even when you, even when you don't understand it. And when you understand it, you got to put your life in his hand. You still got to trust the father, regardless of the outcome. Huh? Even if he don't, even if he don't, 
deliver me from the flames. I know I'm going to be with the Father regardless. Regardless, I'm going to win anyway. I'm going to win anyway. I don't believe no one leaves here in, until uh, it's, it's, it's time. Amen. Until it's time. And God is the one that allots to us the time when it's time for us to leave. Whether, whether we're being disobedient or not. We're all on on God's watch in this hour. But we're gonna go, we're gonna go go to Proverbs. Amen. I believe I said chapter three. I got two Bibles here, so I'm looking to my right and I'm looking to my left. <clears throat> I got my amplified Bible and I also have my uh, my King James Bible to my right. To your left. I said Proverbs, right? Proverbs. Proverbs, yeah, Proverbs. I'm, I'm going to some. Man, Proverbs. Proverbs 3. You know, I began reading Proverbs 3 on today. Amen. I'm sure what the Lord is giving me. Amen. With you today. Amen. God is good. Amen. Let's read some of it. Let me make sure I'm on the right page. Over here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's 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 read some of this. Proverbs chapter three. We we might we may go through this whole chapter. I really want to do this whole chapter this evening. Amen. Because it's a lot of good good meat in here. Amen. A lot of good instruction in here. Amen. Amen. The title of this lesson, amen. We're going to title it Trust. Trust. Uh, verse 1 says, my, my son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Then verse 2 says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Then it says, let not mercy or kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy, of thy heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. <laughs> Listen, he gonna, God going to live up to his end. Amen. But we got to live up to our end of, of, of what... The instructions that we're getting from the word of God. We got to live up to that end of the word as far as being obedient. Amen. The Bible says, I believe, uh, that God requires obedience. He, he, he requires obedience more than he does sacrifice. Obedience to his word. Huh? Obedience to his word. And trusting in his word. Trusting in the Father, trusting in the Son, trusting in the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I believe I believe so many times, you know, this is where we're failing at. Amen. We, we refuse to, to trust. Amen. And what the word of God is telling us. Amen. When we're reading it and when we're in the word. Amen. We got to understand that we got to. Trust in the Lord. And not only just trust in the Lord, but trust in his word. Amen. And not only be hearers of the word, but we got to also be doers of the word. Not deceiving our own selves. James says in the book of James. Let's let let's let me read some of this from the Amplified. Man, this is a, this is this is good. Amen. I love the word of God. It just, it just, listen, it just does some, it just, it, it, it embraces me as I embrace the word. <laughs> and it feels, it just feels so good to me. Amen. 
my son, forget not my law. I'm going back to uh, Proverbs 3, starting over, I'm reading this time from the Amplified Version. My son, forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Huh? Let your heart keep my commandments. See, we, we, we need to get this word. We need to get this word of God down on the inside of our hearts. Amen. Huh? We need to get it in our heart. The Bible even talks about us guarding our heart. For out of it flows the issues, the issues of life. Huh? That's why we need to get this life, the word of God, in our heart. Huh? See, because what's in our heart, amen, that's what's going to come out. Amen. That's what's going to come out. It's what's in our heart. Amen. So we need to get this word in our heart. Amen. Because once we get this word in our heart, we'll find ourselves speaking the word of God. We'll find ourselves not only speaking the word of God, but doing the word of God. Because once it's in your heart, amen, you're going you gonna, you gonna to perform the word. Huh? By way of the Holy Spirit, you're going to begin to put, put the word into action. Meaning that when the Holy Spirit prompts you, amen. To be obedient to the word of God. You're going to follow the guiding and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, my son, forget not my law or teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments. Huh? That's why it's important to not let anything and everything get in. That's why the scripture say, God, your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. Amen. The very issues of life. The Bible says, where you're listening, where your where your treasure, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We got to get to the point to where we love God, where we really love God and we trust God, huh? And that we believe that He is faithful and true. And where we we got to get to the point where we we actually love the Word of God. That's why a lot of us we don't have peace and rest in the Lord in this hour because we really don't trust. God, the way we say we trust God. We really don't believe the word of God the way we say we believe the word of God. We don't. We really don't. If we, if we did, we wouldn't be walking around. Amen. In fear. The Bible says that God does not, does not give us as believers the spirit of fear, but he gives us love. Love. Jesus. Power in a sound mind. See, your mind will be sound. Amen. Once you begin to consume the word of God and you begin to really truly trust in the word of God. Huh? I'm telling you. See, that's a clear indicator. If you're walking in fear that you don't trust the word, that you don't trust the father. Uh, listen, I don't I don't care what they say. Listen, if you're walking in fear in this hour, you don't believe the word. You don't trust in what the word of God is saying, because if you did, it would be in your heart. To perform the word. To work, let the word work itself out in your life. I'm telling you. Man, this is, listen, this is some, I mean, Proverbs chapter 3 is powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. Because, listen, it is powerful. Listen, it would, I believe, you know, it, it would change aspects of your life. It would change the perspective. Of life for you. Amen. As you begin to dig into this word. Amen. And begin to study it. For my son. Forget not my law. Or teaching. But let your heart keep. Huh? Keep. Huh? Meaning let your heart guard. Huh? Guard my word. He's talking about his word. His, his teaching. Huh? For the length of days and years of life, huh? Shall they add unto you? It's talking about inwardly. Listen, it's talking about life, the life inwardly and outwardly. It's talking about both, both the life that you live, amen, on on physically and the life that you live uh, inwardly. It's talking about both lives, huh? It's talking about both lives that it would add to you. It will add to you peace. Huh? And long life. 
See, it will give you a quality, a quality of life. Huh? A quality of life. Not just long life, but you would have a, a, qual a good quality life. Huh? You know how you can go into the store and you can find a, a, a bad quality of meat or you can find some good quality some bad a uh, good quality of meat but god said he'll give you a good quality of life he'll, it will add unto you if you will keep his keep his word if we will keep his word and guard his sins and love his word and obey his word it will add a, a, a better quality of life for us amen not saying that we're not going to go through storms amen but we can have the peace of god that surpasses our understanding when we go through certain issues and circumstances in life. We don't have to act like these lukewarm believers. We don't, we don't have to act like the people that's in the world. They don't have what we have. Some of us, we, we, we have this, but and we're not even operating in it the way we should. We're not even believing the word of God like we should. We're not letting the word of God pierce us. Ha! We're not letting the word of God pierce us. Like it's supposed to pierce. The word of God is supposed to pierce. Break through your skin. And penetrate your soul and your spirit. All the way down to the, to the marrow and the bones. In the intents of your heart. The word of God is supposed to, to penetrate your very being. Huh? It changes the whole man. It separates us from the things of this world. It separates us from the sins and the weights that so both that so be easily besets us. It's it be, listen. The word of God is, is is it penetrates. I'm telling you, the word God is sharper. The Bible says sharp than any two edged sword. Amen. Let's look at something right quick. Let's look at something in this first verse. I don't even know if I'm going to finish all this now because I just don't. I just don't. I just don't. You know. But we need to get into some of this. That first verse says, my son, forget when Proverbs 3. 3 and 1 now. We, we already read 1 through 5. But basically what we're doing now is going back through this because I want to look at certain words in this verse. I believe it's in this verse. I thought it was in this verse. This No, that's not in, not in this particular verse here, but we're going to get to it in a minute. So we see, for a length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto you. See, see, look, look, look at that. See, look at that verse, that verse 2. It says, for a length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto you. See, you, see, 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 you don't have the peace of God. You don't have the peace of God until you become born again and you begin to dig into this word. Amen. And, and begin to get an understanding of, of, of God and his word and begin to build a relationship with the father. Begin to be, uh, uh, build a, a commitment, uh, a trust, a confidence in the father. And this is a this is a process that goes on. On a daily basis, as we as we live this word by way of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We begin to gain faith. The Bible said we we move from faith to faith, from faith to faith, and from glory to glory. Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So as we as we dig into the word of God, and as we begin to allow the word of God to work in our life by way of the Holy Spirit, and we begin to obey. What the Spirit is telling us to do according to the Word of God. We be, this is when we begin to, to gain a certain amount of peace. Amen. When we go through certain storms and trials in our life. Amen. You can lose your job and still have peace. Because you understand who the Father is. 
based on what he's shown you in his word by way of the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen, diseases can be be running rampant, amen, all around you. But because you understand uh, who God is through his word and by way of the Holy Spirit, amen, and through your experiences with God, it won't move you. It won't move you. Not even death. Even in death, amen, you can have peace, amen, as you transition, amen, into eternal life. It won't listen. The, the, listen, the, the things that, that bother others won't bother you because you understand who God is. You understand who your father is. The word has pierced you already. Ha! The word has pierced you already to the point that it, it has taken out all of the impurities in your life, all the uncleannesses in your life. You no longer have a double mind. See, the word of God will get rid of that double mind. The Bible says in James, I believe, that a, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his decisions, huh? in all of his choices, in all of his steps. But when your steps are ordered by the Lord, you no longer double-minded because you're walking in tune with the Holy Spirit and with the word of God. I'm telling you, it's important to trust God and his word in this hour. It's important to trust God and his word in this hour. It's important. It's important to have the quality of life that we read in, in, in verse 2 that God wants us to have, to have the peace in this life that God wants us to have. We got to understand that the world don't have this peace because they don't trust in his word. They don't trust in God. They don't trust in the Holy Spirit. They don't trust in Jesus. Jesus even said, my peace I leave unto you, not the peace that the world give it. It's totally different. The peace that the world give it is destructive. The peace that the world give it is destructive. It'll cause you to take your own life in bad times. But the peace that God give it, huh? Will, will cause you to submit to the Father in his word and to walk in wholeness and in peace, huh? And in the prosperity of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we got to trust in the Father. We got to trust in, we got to get back to trusting in the Father and in his word. I'm telling you, we got to get back to trusting the Father in his word. We got to get back to that. Let me see here. I'm looking up some stuff. Yeah. See, so it said, let, let your heart keep. Keep. Let your heart keep my commandments. It's talking about let your heart maintain. Main, that word means to maintain his word. Huh? To preserve his word. To guard his word. Huh? To be a keeper of his word in your heart. That's what the word is saying. That's why it's so important to stay in the word. Stay in the word. Continue to read the word. Continue to listen to the word. Continue to obey the word. Amen. This is my son. Forget not my law or teaching. Let me look that up right quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Verse 2 says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. See, it's going to add these things to you. Huh? It's going to add these things to you. These are things that you don't that you that you don't already have until you connect to the vine, the true vine, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and you begin to, to break bread with him by way of the Holy Spirit and reading his word and begin to be obedient to the word of God. These things begin to be added unto your life and unto my life. I can have peace. Huh? I can have peace when I'm when I'm out of work. I can have peace when I don't have uh, the food that I think I should have. Amen. Or the clothes that I, I don't or the shelter. Amen. I can have that peace still. Even even I believe it was it was Paul who said that he learned to be content. He learned to be content. Huh? Whether he had plenty or whether he had little, he learned to be content. Why? Because he understood who the father was. Huh? He was still he still had peace. Amen. When he was lacking, he said he had peace when he had much. He had peace when he was going through different circumstances. In life, he had peace. He didn't always, listen, he didn't always have the best of things. But the best thing that he did have was the Father. An understanding of the Father. The wisdom of the Father. The peace of the Father. He had the word of God tucked away in his heart. And he relied and he trusted in God to get him through any circumstance that life may bring his way. Amen. I'm telling you, that's what the words say. That's what the words say. Let's go look at, uh, I got another scripture that we're going to go look at in, in Deuteronomy. Let's go look at Deuteronomy. Because all of this is imperative. It's important, amen, to get these precepts down, amen, if we're going to have a successful life in the Father. Amen. It's imperative. Amen. That we, the Bible says that my people perish. See, we're drowning in so many things because we don't understand, so we don't understand the word of God. We don't trust the Father like we should. We don't obey the word of God like we should and we're drowning. It's almost like Peter when he took his eyes off the Father, off of Jesus. And he began to look at his circumstances. But when you get your focus back on the word, which is Christ, get your focus back on the Father. Get your focus back on the word. That's why our deliverance is. Amen. Focusing. Having trust. Huh? And faith in God. I'm telling you, we got to get back to believe and trust in, in the Father again. So that we won't be drowning in the things of this life. I'm telling you, we got to get back to that. Let, let, let's look at uh, Deuteronomy, I believe. Let's see. Deuteronomy chapter. Let me see. I was looking at some stuff also that, that, that kind of lined up. Was it Deuteronomy?
to uh okay let's go to Deuteronomy 6 I found it Deuteronomy 6 I don't know how I missed that but it's, it's right there in front of me the whole time Deuteronomy 6 yeah let's look at this Deuteronomy 6 because I want to show you something that the Lord showed me uh in Deuteronomy uh let's look at this right quick let me see we're gonna start at verse one. We're gonna start at verse one because this 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 goes in line with Proverbs. I mean not yeah, Proverbs three. Amen. Proverbs chapter three. But we're going to Deuteronomy six. I'm gonna I'm gonna read down to uh seven. It says, uh now this is the instruction, the laws and precepts which the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land to which you go to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, <laughs> you and your sons and your son's son. See, this this is all this I've been working on. Uh, Lord been having me working on something dealing with uh, the fear of the Lord. Amen. And 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 to fear of, the fear of, the fear of the Lord is very important to have. Amen. It really is. It's really it's, it really is essential uh, uh, to uh, the quality of life. Amen. That uh, we as believers uh, should have, Amen. When 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 having faith in God, the having the fear of the Lord is very important, Amen. Uh, I believe a lot of us are falling by the wayside because we do not fear the Lord the way we should. And when I talk about when we're talking about <clears throat> the fear of the Lord, we're talking about reverential fear. We're talking about respecting God, honoring God. Ha! I'm telling you, it's very important, amen, in order to 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 uh, fulfill God's uh, purpose in your life. If you're a believer, you got to have uh, the fear of the Lord because because with the fear of the Lord, there's a lot of things come with uh, the fear of the Lord. I believe in I believe it's in Proverbs. Uh, I believe it's in Proverbs where it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't even listen. You can't even get hold of the wisdom of God. Huh? You can't even get hold of the wisdom of God like you should. Amen. If you don't respect God, if you don't rever reverence the Father, you can't even, you can't even, and that's why a lot of us don't have the peace also of the Father, but it's cause, because we don't fear him. We do not fear the Father. We don't trust, we don't trust the Father. We don't trust his word. I'm telling you, the fear of the Lord is very essential to have to be a part of of our daily walk as believers i'm telling you to be to to walk circumspect to the father and in reverential fear to the father i'm telling you it's important because you lose a lot of ground you lose i'm you losing a lot of ground as far as having the the, the uh living the life that the father wants us to live we lose a lot of ground because we don't fear we don't fear the lord like we should we don't fear the father like we should Amen. See, this is go hand in hand with, with reading the Father's word and being obedient to the word of God and to the Father and the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, the fear of the Lord is very important in this hour. I ain't talking about hiding under the bed or uh, uh, under a desk or anything like that. I'm talking about respect and honor for the Father. Reverential fear for the Father, for, for who he is. Amen. Now let's look at verse 2. We in Deuteronomy 6 and 2 now. We read verse 1. Amen. That you may see. See, he's telling the telling the teacher's kids how to have that reverential fear and respect for the father. Now let's read verse 1 again. Now, this is the instruction, the laws, and the precepts which the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land to which you go to possess it. That you may fear the Lord, your God, you and your sons and your sons' sons, and keep all the statutes and commandments which I command you all the days of your life. That your days may be prolonged. See, see, there is no retirement. There is no retirement in the Father. Listen, this goes on and on and on. Amen. Until we until we go and be with the Father. 
It goes on and on. There is no retirement in God. We constantly read in the word. We constantly meditate on the, on the goodness of God and on his word. We constantly being obedient and respectful and rever reverence in the Father. We don't stop doing this. Huh? It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Amen. And then verse 3 says, Hear therefore, O Israel, and be watchful to them, that it may be well with you that you may increase exceedingly as the Lord, the God of your father has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. See, their, their, their success depended on them. Listen, their success, the children of Israel's success depended on them being respectful and, 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 and having that fear of the Lord, amen, and, and, and them teaching their, their, their kids the word of God and them, first, first and foremost, they had to be in the word of God for themselves. And obeying the word of God for themselves. This 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 had a great impact on how far they was gonna go. Huh? In the Lord. This got a great impact on us in this hour. If we're gonna walk in fear or not, if we're gonna trust God in his word in this hour, if we're gonna walk in the fear of the Lord. And then it says, uh <clears throat> it says verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. Is one Lord. Huh? And you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and with your entire being, with all of your might. Huh? See, we got to learn, we got to love the Father. We got to love God, man. We got to love, we got to love the Father. We need to love, love the Father, love his word, love everything about God. We got to. We can't walk in hate towards one another. Huh? We can't even walk in hate towards one another. The father said, if you, if you don't love your brother, huh? You don't love him. He said, how can you say you love me when you don't even, you don't even love your brother whom you have seen? And he was created in my own very image. Huh? So if we don't, if we don't love the person, amen, next to us, then we really don't love the father. We can quit lying about that. We don't really love the father if we don't love the person that's next to us. I'm telling you, the Bible said, love your, even your enemies. It said, love your enemies. Huh? If, listen, we don't, we don't, we're going to have to get that. Amen. We got to be constantly walking in love. Huh? And in the fear of the Father. All of this. Amen. All of these things. Amen. Are important. Amen. In our walk as a believer, as far as how much success we're going to have in the Father and listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to direct us. If we're walking in hate, how is the Holy Spirit going to direct us if we're walking in hate? If we want to walk in hate when the Holy Spirit is telling us to walk in love. How we going to have the how we going to have the peace, which was one of the fruits of the spirit. Amen. How we going to walk in that when the Holy Spirit is trying to 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 convict us or urge us to walk in that peace? When we don't trust God, when we don't trust his word. Let's go. It says, uh, uh, verse six. And, and these words which I command, which I am commanding you this day shall be in your minds and in your hearts. We got to get this. Listen, we got to get this in us. The Bible says, I believe it's Romans chapter 12. Be you transformed. Be you transformed. Be you transformed. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God is. Huh? And what's pleasing to the Father. Be you transformed. Listen, all that stuff that we've been taught by the world as far as how to be jealous and how to be envious of other people and hateful towards other people. We got to get rid of all of that teaching that we got from the world or from our family members. And we got to come back to the word of God and allow the word of God to renew, to renew, to renew, to renew our minds. Our minds have to be renewed all over again. Amen. Let's go. It says, uh, let's, let's, let's look at this verse seven. This is the one that I really wanted to look at. It says, and you shall wet and sharpen them so as to make them penetrate. This, this, this. Let's, let me go. Let me let me look at that. Let's go to that in my uh, 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 King James version, and what we'll be on the same page, Kyle. Hallelujah. 
I found something very interesting in that verse. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, verse 7 now. 6 and 7. Found something very interesting in there. Amen. Let's look at it. It says, and you shall, verse 7 says, we're in Deuteronomy 6 and 7 now, and you shall teach them diligently unto thy children, and you shall talk of them when thou sittest down in thy house, and when you walkest by the way, and when you liest down, and when you rises up, and you shall bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and between the frontlets and between thy hand, thou shalt write them upon thy the post of thy house and on thy gate and on thy gates. Now let's look at let me look at it back over here again, over here again. Uh, matter of fact, let me get it over because I want to look this word up. It says it, I'm gonna show you what it says in my in my amplified in this amplified right quick. Hey Amen. Give me a minute. I know. I, boom. Six and seven. Now this 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 year when I looked this up this was this this was uh I love this it says and when you, let me go let me go over here. it says and you shall and you shall wet and sharpen them so as to make them penetrate and teach and impress them diligently upon the minds and hearts of your children see that there that word teach diligently. That word teach diligently means shana, shana in the Hebrew. Huh? It means, that word teach means to pierce. Means to pierce. Huh? To sharpen. To prick. Huh? That's what that word mean in Deuteronomy 6 and 7. That word teach means to pierce. So when you listen, when we when we going forward with the word, Amen. You want that word, we want you want that word to well when you read the word, you want that word to see that word should be should pierce you like a double edged sword. That's why the Bible says that the word of God is quick and alive and sharper than any two edged sword. Person, it says person, huh? Between the soul and the and the and the, and the, and the spirit, huh? So that's what you want the word to be doing. That's what that's the problem we're having with these false prophets and these 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 pastors uh, are preaching this watered down word. They preaching a word that that it won't even penetrate your soul and your spirit. Let alone it won't even penetrate your flesh. It the word that they preaching won't even penetrate your flesh, huh? Huh? Won't even penetrate your flesh. The word, Amen. When it go forth, it should. It should be so sharp that it begins to cut the mess and the junk out of our lives. That's what he's <clears throat> that's what he's saying right here in this verse. Amen. And it goes right along with Proverbs. Amen. The word is, is so sharp. Amen. The word of God is sharp. We got to understand that the word of God is not dull. It's not dull. It's the pre it's the people that's delivering the word of God that's dull. It's not the word that's dull. It's the people that's watering the word of God down. To the point where people can't be delivered in this hour. The word needs to be sharper than a two-edged sword. Than a two-edged sword where it can penetrate the sin. Amen. In the weights that's in people's lives. So that changes could be taking place in people's lives. Man, I thought that was awesome when I seen when I when I seen that because that's the same thing. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews right quick and read that verse. Let's go to Hebrews and read that verse. Hebrews 4 and uh, 12, I believe. Let me see. Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. And full of power. See? The word of God is alive and full of power. There's no reason for a person's life not to be changing. There's no reason. The only reason that we can think of is that the word of God is being handled deceitfully and craft and, and craftily. Huh? That's why the word of God is not it's not it's not penetrating. Amen. The person's uh, uh flesh. See, 
It's not even offend the word that they preaching in this house. It's not even offending uh, an individual's flesh when they in the, in the house of God. They don't even even want to talk about sin. And the Bible talks about sin, huh? The word of God is supposed to be able to penetrate a person's flesh and go deep into a person's being, huh? To his very soul and spirit, to the bone and the joints of the marrow. That's how powerful the word of God is. Even if we trust in the word of God like we're supposed to trust in it, the word of God is capable of changing huh? our perspective about the circumstances that's around us. Amen. We won't have to walk the way the world is walking. We won't have to walk in fear. You won't have to walk in hate. The word of God will come in and change your perspective, will change your life. Let's look at it. It's, a, it's sharper. It's sharper. Huh? Than any. That, that, listen, there's not a sword or sword on the earth. Amen. That's sharper than the word of God. That's sharper than the word of God. What sword you know that can pierce a man's uh, uh, soul and spirit and divide the two? Huh? Nothing but the word of God can do that and change a person's life. Listen, it goes all the way into the person's intents and in the, in, in their thoughts. Amen. If the word of God would, listen, would correct our thoughts. That's why the Bible says we, we need our, our minds need to be renewed. By the word of God, the word of God can renew our minds and our souls, our reasoning, our thoughts. Amen. We want to have to walk. Listen, I don't care what's what's going on out there. Amen. You can have trust in the in in, in faith in the word of God. That the word that the word of God is capable of sustaining us through any situation that we go or face in this life. Even death. That's why Stephen was able to to look his accusers or his enemies in the in, in 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 the face of being stoned into death and say, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, because they don't know what they're doing, because they don't have the revelation knowledge of the Word of God. They don't know the Father the way He knew the Father or the way we know the Father. They don't know what they're doing." That's why Jesus could say the same thing when he was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not of what they're doing. Amen. I thought that was, man, I thought that was powerful when I read, when I read that. Let's go back to Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs. Amen. I might have to skip over some of this Proverbs because uh, time is getting away with us. Time is getting away with us. And we might have to, I'm going to read some more of this Proverbs 3. But you see how important it is, amen, to allow the word of God to, to, to pierce through your flesh all the way to your, your soul and your spirit and down to the bones and, and, and into the marrow, into the in, intents and the thoughts of, of, of our very hearts, amen. And let it begin to, to make those changes that it needs to make by way of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Even Jeremiah said, I believe in uh, in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, I believe that he said, uh, the word of God is like a hammer. It breaks in pieces. Huh? The most stubbornest rock. Amen. That's how powerful the word of God is. Amen. But we need to get the word of God uh, in, the, in the most potent form that we can get it in the most purest form as we can get it we don't need the word of god being diluted or watered down they they, they, they doing uh the people of god a disservice <clears throat> amen amen Let, let's look at some more of this proverbs 3 because this is some this is some good stuff and then it says um proverbs let's go to uh three and five lean hold on let me go let me get it let me get it right quick Proverbs 3 and 5. It said, trust. See, see, now let's go back up 1 to verse 4. Now let's go back up to verse 3 because we already read verse 2. I'm going to read it again. For length of thy days 
We're in Proverbs 3 and uh, 2 now. For the length of thy days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. So you can see how these things will be added unto you, but we have to be, we have to trust. We have to trust in the word and in the Father and the Holy Spirit and in, 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 in our big brother Jesus. And then it says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Huh? And bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thy heart. Over here it says, let not mercy and kindness, huh, and truth forsake you, but bind them about your neck, write them upon the tablet of your heart, huh? Let not mercy and kindness, see, by you not letting mercy or me not letting mercy <clears throat> and kindness forsake me, huh? It, meaning if I do what the word of God say do, the Bible says he that show mercy shall receive mercy. He that show kindness shall receive kindness. Huh? He that, that forgive it shall receive forgiveness from the Father. So if I do what the word of God is saying to do, then I won't have to walk in hatred. Huh? If I'm walking in mercy and in kindness, then I'm not walking in selfishness and in hatred. Huh? See, I'm walking in the spirit. I'm walking in the power of his word. And I don't have to be involved in all the foolishness or get caught up in all the foolishness. I can walk around with a sound mind. Why? Because my eyes is fixed on the word of God. And I'm, and I'm being obedient to the word. I'm walking in mercy. I'm walking in kindness. I'm walking in peace. My mind does not have to be disturbed because I'm walking in mercy. I'm walking in kindness. I'm not being selfish. I'm not walking in racism or hatred. Huh? And then it says truth. Don't let truth forsake you. Huh? That means you can walk. You can be a genuine person. Amen. The Bible said let love be, be, be genuine. Let it be a real thing in your life. Don't be false. Don't be fake. You got people that, you know, they say smile in your face. Amen. Huh? They smile in your face. Amen. But they're not walking in genuine love like they're supposed to. They got uh, interior motives. Huh? They got interior motives. They're not walking in love. They're not walking in truth. They're walking in falsehood and hypocrisy. But if we do what the word say, then we can walk. We can have a sound mind. We can walk in peace. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. See, all of this is important, man. You know what I mean? To have a good quality of life. Who wants to walk around being bitter and envious and, 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 and jealous of other people? It takes a lot of strength and energy to do that. Amen. I'm going to get ready to shut this thing down. It says, so shall you find favor and good understanding and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So you're going to find favor. Man, look, this, this is powerful. You're going to find favor with God and man. And you're going to get a good understanding. Huh? You're going to get good understanding of how the Father works. You're going to get a good understanding of how the Holy Spirit works. You're going to get a good understanding of the manifestation of, of Jesus in your life. Huh? You're going to get a good understanding of the people that dislike you. Even though you're walking in truth, you're going to get a good understanding of that. Even though you're walking in truth. Even though you're walking in mercy and in kindness and in love and in peace. But you're going to get a good understanding of those people. Huh? And you're going to get a good understanding of walking in the power of God's love. I'm telling you, if we do these things, and then it says, lean, see, this is what it other. it says, and you shall find favor and good understanding, huh, in the sight of God. You're going to find a good understanding of God, and you're going to get a good understanding, because now you're beginning to experience God, huh, because you, you're walking out his word by way of the Holy Spirit in your life, huh. See, the Holy Spirit is the best, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher, not experience. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. I'm telling you. See, but you but you can learn some things through experience, huh? 
You learn more about who the Father is through experience. But we got to be obedient to this word if we're going to allow God to manifest himself. In our, how can he manifest himself in our life if we're not doing what the word say do? If we're not, you know, walking in the word and doing the word and putting our trust in the word. That's why many of us are walking around fear, fearful in this hour because we don't believe God. We don't trust the word. We're not walking in it. And then it says, lean. I mean, let me go. Let me get that here. I keep doing I keep doing that. It says, uh, verse 5 says, trust in the Lord. Huh? Trust in the Lord. Huh? Put your confidence in the Lord. Put your security in the Lord. Put your, sal your salvation is in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. Be confident and be sure and be bold <coughs> in the Lord. That's what it's saying. That's exactly what it's saying. And then it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Pierce yourself not through the side with your own understanding. Huh? Lean not to your... Listen, don't support yourself on your own understanding. Don't rely on your own understanding. Huh? But in all thy ways. But in all thy ways. Huh? But in all of your conversation, in your course of life, in your mode of action, in all of those ways. Huh? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct our path if we consider him if we acknowledge him consider the word consider the word be controlled by the spirit of God the Bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually huh? but to be spiritually minded is life and peace in the Holy Spirit God bless you God bless you people of God Trust in the Lord.